I was thinking of um, like the land is a home and then realizing that uh, a lodge, uh, Nedoyas, um, is created from the landscape. And then the painted lodges, um, those have symbology that are connected to stories that are based on the land and so important teachings. So, um, so then I started thinking of creating in this space um, a deconstructed lodge. What you've told me about what you're going to do sounds really lovely in the sense that it actually works with the space and creates an makes the space even more interesting. Not only showing you know your history and, and your relationships to the land, mm -hmm. but hopefully enlightening you know people yeah. to the Blackfoot connection to the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just creating all these different talking points from the work. So not only are you seeing something that was um, is visually beautiful, but in our ancestors' way of thinking, all of the what we call art today was symbols that meant had history and meaning behind them um, so bringing all those into the room and sort of sharing those stories with the space and those connections and letting um, them be revived and carried on past them i'm here at blackfoot crossings uh, located on the Siksika nation the blackfoot crossings is a really important place for the Blackfoot people as it was where um, traditionally where there was once a ridge where uh, people would cross easily over the river. Historically also a place of uh, meeting. Behind me uh, is where the Treaty 7 treaty was signed uh, by the tribes Siksiga, Ghana, and Bugani. I arrived at the idea of creating a deconstructed lodge um, when I was thinking about the residency Tsakhkomitabiks, which means earth beings, and thinking about how this, how the land is considered our home, and that the lodge would be the best symbol and way to represent that as everything that is created um, for the lodge is from nature. So the lodge was constructed from buffalo hide, animals come from the earth. The TP lodge poles um, are from the lands and they're from the forest. So it's bringing that forest element, the mountain element into it, um, the animal element into it. And so I thought that that would be a really powerful thing to bring into the gallery space. My grandmother taught my mom how to bead and then my mom taught me how to bead. And so I've taken that practice and continued on in teaching my daughter. I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to be um, the Indigenous artist in residency there, creating art that um, represents the, the Blackfoot people. Um, it wasn't very long ago where, you know, we weren't allowed to be proud of who we were. So it's a step in the right direction for the next generations because our art was kind of this forgotten, forgotten thing, but through the work of you know, different galleries, strong Blackfoot artists, um, you know, kind of leading the way for the next generations to feel um, comfortable and confident in what they're creating. In terms of land acknowledgement, your work uh, not only speaks to that, but shares the breadth of Blackfoot uh, uh, culture, Blackfoot history, and in this territory, black the connection to the land. So all the elements you speak to, the animal, the, the beadwork in the mountains, the par flesh, the stars, I think it creates this really wonderful um, story and wonderful journey uh, in coming to know <laughs> black, but ways of being. And, and I think, you know, so much in terms of land acknowledgements, uh, the importance of, you know, how to really think about them or rethink about them, because I think, you know, like everything, things evolve. And right now it's just really these words, sometimes are nebulous words that, yes, we're connected, but the question is, how are you connected? You know, and where does that come from? And, and I think for me, what you're showing is your heart connection. The connection spiritually and everything, physically uh, to these, these elements. And I think that is such an important 
story and an important lesson.